Fight fans, welcome to the PBC Podcast, brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions with your host, Kenneth Buhari and Michael Rosenthal. Welcome, everybody, to the PBC Podcast. I'm Kenneth Buhari. And I'm Michael Rosenthal, editor of USA Today's Boxing Junkie. I want to thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. We've got a stack show this week. We say that every week, but hey, it's true every single week. Uh, David Benavidez will be joining us a little later in the show. And in this week's toe-to-toe section, Mike and I are going to list the five greatest boxing siblings of all time, of course, with a, a tip of our hat to uh, next week's big pay-per-view. Uh, the Benavidez brothers, David and Jose uh, Benavidez Jr., both on that card. Also, Jamal Charlo, uh, part of the uh, Charlo twins, will be on that card as well. So I figure it's a good time uh, to bring up that topic and, and um, discuss some of the greatest boxing siblings in the sports history. But let's bring in our first guest this week. He's one of the most exciting fighters in boxing. He's a serious heavy hitter who's going to take on another serious heavy hitter in a top contender show, Jahan Ergashev, Saturday. November 25th at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, live on Showtime pay-per-view, the IBF 140-pound world champion, Subriel Matias. Uh, Subriel, how has camp been for this upcoming fight versus Ergashev? No, no estoy aquí. Eh, pues mira, el campamento, ¿verdad? hasta el momento, gracias a Dios, ha sido bien. Estamos en salud, que es lo importante. Y nada, ya esperando... Thankfully, the, the you know my camp has been really good. I have felt really good. Uh, now it's just a matter of waiting for fight night. What can you tell us about Ergashev? What do you know about him? De él no sé mucho. Sabe, yo iba a pelear con él si no me equivoco en el 2021. Y vamos a hacer una eliminatoria. Y no sé qué pasó que ellos declinaron. Entonces, pues pensábamos que habíamos pasado la página y ya pues hoy es oficial y hacer lo que debimos de hacer lo que hicimos en el 2021 en contra de Yukon Bayer. I really don't know much about him. I do know that I was supposed to fight him in 2021. He was supposed to be an, an eliminator fight and then they backed out of it for some reason. I thought since then that we had turned the page on him, but now uh, he's back at it again. Seems like he's the one that, that we have to beat this time around. And that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, Subriel, uh, Ergachev is known for his power punching. Is that something you have to be wary of? Or are you just going to fight fire with fire? Pues mira, eh, creo que mi estilo, ¿verdad? Ya ustedes han visto, creo que no debe de haber mucho en cambio. Entonces creo que la pelea mía sería la misma que he hecho en toda mi carrera. You guys have seen how I fight, my style. So... Based on that, I don't see why I have to change for him. I'm going to do my thing and go and go out and fight the way I know how to fight. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a fan-friendly fight. You got two aggressive oh, okay. guys, offensive-minded guys. Does that actually add to the excitement for Sabriel, or is he just focused on his opponent and that doesn't matter? Well, mira, realmente la meta es clara. Y es ganar, eh, demostrar el por qué estamos aquí. Y sobre todo, hacerle entender a, al Gachev de que él no está él no se ganó el lugar al cual lo van a poner a pelear. I have three goals and they don't really have to do with what you mentioned the the fan friendly fight. They are more about number one, just winning no matter what in in uh, whatever it takes. Number two is uh, showing uh, what what I'm about. I wanna I wanna prove my worth. And then number three is that I have to show Ergoshev that he has no business being where he is right now. And I'm going to make sure that he knows it. It's funny you say that because a lot of people feel like Ergoshev is going to be is your toughest test. Uh, so I'm assuming you don't agree. Bueno, eso es el que no habla, el que no sabe de boxeo. Pero el que realmente sabe, sabe que no ha peleado con nadie. Eh o al menos con el estilo mío. Y creo que eso lo vamos a dejar demostrar el 25. Uh, Kenneth, I'm, sur I'm surprised. Uh, I thought you knew about boxing. Ergo Show hasn't, hasn't fought anybody. I'm going to show you that 
uh, you know, that he's not at the level that people think he is. And I'm going to prove what my, what my level is on, uh, on Saturday night too. So he is your mandatory challenger. If you win, you know, you can basically fight whoever it is, whoever you want to fight. Uh, is there any specific fighter that you're targeting after Ergashev? Pues mira, realmente yo quiero a los nombres grandes de, de la división. Entonces, todo aquel que aporte ¿verdad? mi crecimiento, que sea bienvenido. I don't have a specific name in mind. Bring on the top guns in the division. Whoever whoever is uh, at the top and wants to fight me, the doors are open and I'm willing and able to fight them anytime. Two other top guys, uh, Regis Progre and Devin Haney, will be battling in a few weeks. How do you see that fight playing out? Yeah, realmente que gane quien tenga que ganar, a mí en lo personal no me afecta. Eh, yo pelearía con gusto con cualquiera de los dos. ¿Sabe? Yo estoy ahora mismo puesto para mi pelea. No I could care si... less about that fight. I'm focused on my fight right now. And, you know, whatever whatever they do, it doesn't matter to me because I'll fight either of them when the time comes. Okay, got it. Uh, another fighter who has called you out a lot is Gary Antoine Russell. What are your thoughts on Russell and a potential fight against him? ¿Qué te parecería? Eso es de boca para afuera que lo dice. Porque si somos PBC los dos, ¿por qué nunca se ha enfrentado a mí? Yo siempre he estado ahí, nunca he rehuido a ningún combate. Uh, like I actually wonder why uh, Gary Anton Russell talks uh, talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. We're both PBC. Why hasn't he stepped up and wanted to fight against me? I am genuinely curious about why that is because you know I would be up for it. I don't know why he isn't. Él es el que ha rehuido eh, nombre porque a él se le han presentado nombre y él dice que no. He's the one that's running away. Like we are like, hey, you want to fight? No. So, you know, that's that's on him. You know, Super Yell, you have such a unique style in the ring. Who are some of the, the fighters you admired growing up? Pues mira, realmente siempre ha sido eh, Félix Tito Trinidad. Siempre ha sido, ¿verdad? Desde cuando lo veía hasta el sol de hoy. He is and always will be, uh, and he was, is and always will be, Félix Tito Trinidad. He's uh my role model and somebody that I loved watching fight. I don't blame you. He's one of my favorites as well. So um, how about today? Who, in your opinion, aside from yourself, are the best fighters today? Es que realmente el boxeo no es igual que hace 20 años. Entonces no, no te podría decir nombres así. El estilo de pelea, ¿verdad? Que a mí en lo personal, como fanático me gusta, no lo veo en los boxeadores de hoy en día. no. I don't really have any any fighters that that at the moment I can say that that I follow or or that I or that I look up to. Boxing is a lot different now than it was uh, 20 years ago, and I don't really see anyone standing out and being and being like, okay, yeah, like I I love watching that guy fight. Benavide, la última pelea que ha hecho me encanta como pelea. Es un monstruo. Uh, you can you can say uh, David Benavides. I've seen him fight uh, l lately, and the way that he fights, I love it. He's a monster. Hey, por eso te digo. Well, that that does, he's aware of the nickname. That's why he's saying that he's a monster. Got it, got it. Uh, I'm just curious. Are you training in Puerto Rico for this fight, or or holding camp no. in the U.S. In Mexico. Oh, Mexico. So why hey. did you choose Mexico? My promoter, eh, he got the, the last word, and he say, go to Mexico, I'm here. Okay. Are you, so are you at altitude, high altitude? Eh, Jiquipico, <laughs> yes. Sí, es alto. Uh, es 9,000 pies, casi 10,000. Subriel understands. 9,000, 10,000 feet. All this yeah. time, Subriel understands everything we've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he it sounds like he does. He's learning English. How, how is your English coming along, Subriel? Oh, my English a little bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, obviously, this fight against Ergashev could pave the way for bigger names next year. Uh, do you feel like you're, like, just one step away from, like, becoming a real star, taking part in, you know, really, really big fights? Eh, yo entiendo que si se me da la oportunidad, eh, quizá 
pueda demostrar, ¿verdad?, de qué estamos hechos y el por qué Dios me tiene aquí. Pero hasta el momento, ¿verdad?, no se me ha puesto una buena pelea que yo diga, esta es la que me va a poner en el próximo nivel. Incluso los campeones actuales ninguno me menciona y eso pues me apena porque yo con gusto unificaría con cualquiera. The way, the way I say it is that if I'm given the opportunity, I'll be able uh, to capitalize on it. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get those fights where you say, okay, yeah, this is the Trump, this is the, the platform I need uh, to get to the next level. And besides, the current champions, they don't even mention my name anywhere. And, and there's nothing more than I would like than unifying uh, titles against any of them. What do you think it's going to take to get them in the ring? Stop being afraid. <laughs> See, you know what? Uh, somebody in this way don't want this smoke. Mm. Well, you, you've got you've got a big fight ahead of you, November 25th. <laughs> Let's get your prediction. What's going to happen on fight night? No, no, ahí hay un knockout. Sabe, de cualquiera de, de ambas partes, ¿no? Según por los récords. Yo creo que ninguno de los dos llega a dos asaltos. I think it's a knockout. Neither of us have the, the have the style or propensity to make it all the way to the final to the final bell after 12 rounds. Yo por suerte conozco el infierno, ya me he visto varias veces en desarrollo dentro de ring, ¿verdad? Sé lo que es estar en peligro, sé lo que es estar en aprieto. Eh, vamos a ver, ¿verdad? Si nada, eh, el Gachev piensa igual que yo y es igual que yo. I've already been through hell. I know what it's like inside the ring. I know what it's like to be in tough spots. I know what it's like to be in real danger. Let's see if Ergashev has already learned those lessons as well. Subrio, we want to thank you so much for joining us here. You're one of our favorite fighters to watch. You truly are. We enjoy your style. So we are looking forward to seeing you on, on November 25th, and we wish you the best of luck. Sí, lo entendí. Dile que muchas gracias de corazón. Y que verdad disfrute la pelea el 25. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, Kenneth. And uh, I appreciate your kind words, and I hope that that you guys enjoy your fight in uh, on September 23rd. November 25th, boxing's brightest star shine on one knockout night. He is down! The Mexican monster, undefeated superstar David Benavidez. Benavidez, unloading. What more do you want? Defends his title against undefeated Demetrius Andre. Andre explodes. And Jermall Charlo returns to take on Jose Benavidez Jr. He gets rocked with another right hand. David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre and Jermall Charlo versus Jose Benavidez Jr. Saturday, November 25th, live on pay-per-view. It's time for Mike and I to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This week's topic is the five greatest boxing siblings of all time. And it's really amazing how many great uh, boxing siblings we've seen over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a long, long list. Uh, and I wanted to, to preface this, our list, uh, by saying that we're not considering those who fought before World War II. We got to draw the line somewhere. So, you know, we're missing guys like Mike and Tommy Gibbons who fought way back in the early uh, 20th century who were, you know, amazing fighters. So we're just focusing on uh, uh, post-World War II. Uh, and, and there are several who I considered for my list, but, you know, who didn't make it, which is obviously, which is inevitable. I want to at least acknowledge some of them. Uh, Orlando and Gabby Canizales, who easily mm. could have on the list. Gabriel and Rafael Ruelas, both yeah. of whom were world champions and near and dear to my heart. We both, we come from the same area. Uh, Mikey and Robert Garcia. People might forget that Robert was a world title holder. Uh, the three Gary Russells, who are active now, who could end up on the list when all is said and done. Uh, Terry and Orlin Norris, uh, Jerry and Mike Quarry, the Sor Vorapin brothers from Thailand and the Spania brothers from Venezuela. Uh, and it just goes wow. on and on and on and on. Uh, I also wanted to mention sisters, Amanda and Cindy Serrano. So there are sisters also. So uh, it's a big, uh, a big club. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. You know, boxing is often a family affair. So who goes? So our number five. Uh, on our list of best brother combinations is Michael and Leon Spinks. So I hesitated uh, to include the Spinks uh, in my top personal top five uh, because Leon didn't have a great 
career overall, but Michael was great. And Leon did beat a legend to become heavyweight champion. First, Michael, uh, I think people tend to focus on his brutal knockout loss to Mike Tyson and forget what he accomplished before that. He was one of the greatest 175 pounders ever, in my opinion. He was undefeated and reigned for four years. He made 10 successful title defenses. Uh, and then he beat an aging, but you know, still competent Larry Holmes to win the heavyweight title and then beat Holmes in a rematch. Uh, he also brutally knocked out Jerry Cooney when Cooney was still considered a dangerous guy. Uh, he had, so Michael had an incredible, incredible career. And Leon had his great moment uh, in the eighth, his, in only his eighth pro fight in 1978. He legitimately outpointed an aging Muhammad Ali to become heavyweight champion. He lost it to Ali in the rematch, you know, which would turn out to be Ali's last victory, by the way. Uh, but Leon had already made history. It was a done deal. Uh, Spinks had some success the next few years, but began to decline in the mid 80s. And he hung on way too long, like a lot of fighters do. Uh, I also wanted, just wanted to mention that Leon was also an Olympic gold medalist, which also was in my mind when I was preparing uh, my suggestions for our list. Uh, the Spinks brothers definitely left their mark on boxing. Yeah, that's a really good point about Leon being a, a gold medalist. And that's it's still a hell of a win over Ali, no matter how you slice it. And Michael, I mean, Michael Spinks, just a special fighter, obviously did good things at heavyweight, but at light heavyweight, he was insane. You know, uh, to break this down to the to the younger fans out there, I'll put it to you like this. A lot of people, when you talk about Roy Jones, who's probably the most one of the most unbeatable fighters I've, I've ever seen. And people go, who, you know, who would have beat him in, uh, in a mythical matchup? And a lot of people say Tommy Hearns. Well, I've always said Michael Spinks. Um, good call. Just I because never thought his, about that. Yeah. His, his style is just so unorthodox. He had the size. He had the power. Uh, good jab. The Sphinx jinx. I mean, if, if he landed that shot, it was a wrap. So, um, you know, Michael Sphinx, uh, definitely one of the more, I feel like one of the more underappreciated fighters. Um, I really hear his name mentioned among great fighters. And this is a guy who uh, was dominant at light heavyweight and then moved up and beat the heavyweight champion. Um, so I, I completely agree with them being uh, on this list. Obviously, when you add in what uh, Leon Spinks did as well. Let's uh, let's move on to our next set of siblings, uh, Koksai and and Quacord Galaxy. Uh, some of you are getting history lesson right now. I'm getting a uh, a pronunciation lesson trying to pronounce these right now. Uh, but let me tell you, these are two brothers that all boxing fans uh, need to know about. Mike, I'm sure you would agree. Yeah, I had trouble with the pronunciation. I think it's Kausai and Kaukor Galaxy, but I can't be 100 percent sure. Um, you know, I know this brother combination is relative, relatively obscure, but the Galaxies, in my opinion, definitely deserve to be here. They have a combined record of, get this, 71 and 3 with 60 knockouts. You know, Jeez. that's just it's just nuts. You know, uh, Kause was the star, you know, start with his record. He was 47 and 1 with 41 knockouts. You know, that's why he was known as the Ty Tyson. Uh, and I think people will get where that's coming from. Uh, then consider his accomplishments. He was a 115-pound world champion from 1984 until he retired in 1992, making 19 successful defenses, 16 by knockout. Jeez. That was the longest reign in the, the history of the division. Uh, and I should point out that his only loss came in his seventh pro fight, meaning he was untouchable most of his career. He won his last 41 fights. Uh, meanwhile, his brother was a two-time 118-pound champ. He outpointed three-division title holder Wilfredo Vasquez to win the title for the first time, which was probably his best victory. His record, 24-2 and two with 19 knockouts, also indicates that he was a big, big punch puncher, just like his brother was. Uh, one reason I'm glad... Uh, you know, we went with this topic for this toe to toe is that we get to recognize guys like this. The Galaxy Brothers were special. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they certainly were. And, you know, I, I did. I really did not watch much of them, but remember hearing a whole lot uh, about them. That Wilfredo Vasquez thing is really, really interesting. I did not know that at all. And Vasquez was a uh, one of my favorite fighters. I was so sure he was going to be Prince Nassim Ahmed. Um, when they fought in their time, but uh, good stuff, absolutely good stuff. Let's go on to our next set of brothers, uh, two current world champions that we have certainly enjoyed watching over the years, Jamal and Jermel Charlo. Mike, give us your thoughts on Houston's finest. Well, the Charlos, uh, in terms of their accomplishments, are still a work in progress, which means they could end up higher on this list before uh, all is said and done. Uh, obviously, they've both accomplished, they're both accomplished champions with special all-around ability. Jermel 
probably has done a little bit more than Jamal, becoming the undisputed 154-pound champ. And, you know, he climbed onto most pound-for-pound pound lists uh, in the past couple of years. He's one of the most dominating fighters in the world, in my opinion. Uh, I know he struggled against uh, Canelo Alvarez, but, you know, as I've said on the podcast and I've written it also, you know, that was understandable given the size difference. He took a big swing and he missed, you know. You know, it sort of is what it is. Uh and I think people might sleep on Jamal to some extent, particularly after his layoff. I think he's an excellent technician, at least as good as Jamel is. He can punch. Uh, and he also has a strong r- resume, you know, with victories over guys like Austin Trout and Julian Williams and Sergei Derevchenko. Uh, I think we might be talking about two Hall of Famers when their careers are over. Uh, just mad respect for both of these guys. Yeah, I think you're right regarding the Hall of Fame. It's interesting. Um, Jamel, obviously, it goes without saying, becoming undisputed at that weight class and even taking that that jump to uh, to 168. But man, he dominated 154. He has been dominating 154 for so long. I feel like through multiple eras. This is a guy that made his debut on a Joe Calzaghe undercard. You know, that's how long he's been he's been fighting in so many tricks in his bag excellent boxer power in both hands great chin um just a great fighter and i and you're right i think folks have forgotten about jamal charlo and and for those who have you know go back and and just look at his fight against sergey devranchenko look at that guy look at that jab look at the right hand um just an excellent excellent boxer puncher also fierce in the ring and of course i'm looking forward uh, to seeing him get back in the ring against Jose Benavides Jr. Uh, Saturday, November 25th. Um, let's move on to our next group. We're going to go back to the heavyweight division for our uh, our next dynamic duo, Vitali and Vladimir Klitschko. Mike, give us your thoughts on these two Hall of Famers. So I have uh, I couldn't have much more respect for the Klitschko brothers, you know, both of whom are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, they had different styles. You know, Vad relied... Uh, Vlad relied more on finesse than Vitaly, who I think was just an absolute badass. Uh, but together, they dominated the heavyweight division for, what, about 15 years, you know, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, the problem I have in terms of their accomplishments, if that's what it is, is that I don't believe their opposition was was particularly good. Uh, it was a relatively weak heavyweight era in terms of depth, in my opinion, uh, which you have to consider when assessing them still. They both consistently beat the top challengers of the time, which is all you could have asked for them. You know, what else What else could they do but beat the guys in front of them? And I'll add this. They both battled back from adversity, which is admirable in my book. Uh, Vlad had those weird knockout losses early in his career, but he became almost unbeatable for like a decade. And Vitaly came back after almost a four-year layoff, which was the re- result of injuries, you know, to regain his place at the top of the division. So absolutely just love these guys. And then what they're doing in their country even adds to my respect for them. Yeah. And, and Vladimir to me is criminally, criminally underrated. Uh, I think, I mean, I, I've been seeing more respect for him now, but um, that guy was dominating fights one handed. Sure. It might not have been um, that exciting, but you know, in general, heavyweight fights tend to be sort of drab until the knockout blow. Um, but he really was that good. Uh, he was such an excellent fighter. The way uh, he controlled fights, the uh, left hook, right hand, he could box, he could, he could come forward, which he did against, um, certain fighters, but, you know, um, could knock you out going forward or going backward. He was just a really good fighter and dominated the heavyweight division for about 10 years. Um, and perhaps that's, you know, why they, part of the reason why he gets such a bad rap, um, is because he did it for so long that we got bored. Um, and, and Vitaly of course, as well, uh, you know, won that great first half of his career and then coming back and doing what he did coming out of retirement and uh, becoming world champion once again. I, these are two two special guys and certainly deserving of their uh, Hall of Fame honors. Now, last but not least on this list are the Marquez brothers, Juan Manuel Marquez and Rafael Marquez. Mike, these were some exciting, well-schooled fighters. Indeed, they were. Uh, first, like the Klitschko's, both Marquez brothers are now Hall of Famers. Uh, Rafael recently was inducted. Uh, and second, uh, I believe Marquez is the single best fighter on this list, um, although there are a lot of really good fighters on this list. Uh, Juan Manuel emerged as the best of the great trio of Mexican stars, you know, with Marco Antonio Brer and Eric Morales, in my opinion. Uh, you need to look no further than his four-fight series with Manny Pacquiao. You know, many consider an all-time great. Marquez went one, two, and one in those fights, but many people believe he deserved to win three or maybe even all four of those fights. Imagine if he'd beaten 
Pacquiao four. I don't know if he would have fought him four times if he won the first three, but imagine if he had beaten Pacquiao four times, he'd be perceived differently. Uh, yeah. And he and he stopped Pacquiao with one punch in the finale. That's still the most shocking moment I've ever seen live at a, at a boxing event. I mean, I still can't believe that happened. Uh, he won seven major titles in four divisions. Uh, anyway, I can go on and on with Juan Manuel. Rafael, uh, who was a bigger puncher uh, than his brother, pound for pound, uh, is best known for his epic four fight series against uh, Israel Vasquez, uh, but he had other important wins. He beat Hall of Famer Mark Johnson twice, uh, Mauricio Pastrana twice, Tim Austin once. Uh, and he was so much, just so much fun to watch, which is always important to me. Uh, I just don't think you can beat this uh, this brother combination right now. Just two absolute studs. Yeah, they, they really were. That that went over Tim Austin for Rafael. That was a surprise to me, um, especially given the way the fight was going. Um, actually. And and Juan Manuel Marquez, what, what more can you say about him? Uh, I believe he won the bulk of those fights against Manny Pacquiao. Those were uh, just brilliant battles between Hall of Famers. Shout out to Nacho Beristain as well, because again, I mentioned that they were well-schooled just the way they fought. They threw punches and bunches, great footwork, uh, light on their feet, could box, could bang. Um, very reminiscent of Ricardo Lopez, obviously, who uh, also was trained by uh, by Nacho Barristain. And I don't know what they were doing in that gym, but man, I mean, it just it was just amazing um, to watch the Marquez brothers. Again, I urge you guys to to take a look at, at some of their highlights and just the way they fought. It's it's just brilliant. Um, and that goes for most of the guys on this list here. And uh, as you said, you know, maybe in the future this this list changes somewhat. Who knows? Let's uh, let's bring in our next guest. He takes on Demetrius Andrade in one of the best matchups this year, Saturday, November 25th in Las Vegas, live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. And what a card uh, that is. The undefeated two-time world super middleweight champion, David Benavidez. Hey, David, first things first, I got to ask the obligatory question. How has camp been going? Camp has been going amazing, man. I feel like with me, every time somebody asks me, they say, how has this camp been? I tell them it's been the best that's been. Because for me, it truly has been. I feel like just when, just you, when you evolve as a fighter and you learn more and more and you have the hunger to do it and you don't mind training like myself, I, I love training. You know what I mean? I, even on my off time, I train more than the people who are in camp. So this this um, when I get into camp, you know, I feel like this is the best version of myself. And um, I've been training extremely hard. You know, I know exactly what's in front of me. I know exactly what's at stake. And I know exactly what I want to prove to the people. You know, I feel like I have a lot to show and I have a lot to give. Um, and uh, I have a great opponent to to show that against. And I'm just very excited for this fight. November 25th, it definitely is going to is gonna be a great night for Team Benavides. Sparring-wise, how do you prepare for someone with a style like, like Demetrius Andre? So uh, you, you're you never going to get a fighter um, that spars exactly like, you know, one of the fight a fighter that you're trying to study or a fighter you're trying to emulate. So you get a couple guys with different styles. Um, I got, just for reference, I got a, a Colombian guy who's bronze medal, a bronze medalist in the Olympics, lefty. I got a guy that sparred, Cane that was in training camp with Canelo, Bivol, Sudo Ramirez, lefty. So I, I got some great sparring partners. So, I mean, um. Obviously, they're not going to do the same things that Demetrius does, but they do a lot of great things alone. And also, in 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 fights, you're going to have to you have to learn how to adapt and adjust. And I know that very well, you know. So um, I know Demetrius does some great things, but I do some great things too. So it's just going to be two fighters going at it. David, I'm guessing that he's going to do a lot of sticking and moving. Is the key to this fight you just being you, just delivering smart, relentless pressure? Yeah, definitely. It's always been, it's always been my, you know, it's been my style. It's um, like I said, sometimes you have to do some things to adjust, but you know, just like how Caleb Plant wants to stick and move, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to stay there. You're going to have to, you have to trace shot for shots. You know, I'm a great counter puncher myself and I have very fast hands. So he's going to have to be very careful. You know, I, I'm going to be punching in between the shots and I'm going to look, be looking for the home run on every single one of them. We saw you and Andre rating each other's skills. You made some good points about how it's hard to judge him based on his quality of opposition. What strengths and weaknesses do you see in his game? His strengths are his, um, he throws a lot of combinations. He moves really good. He has good defense. His weaknesses is that he doesn't have too much punching power. 
you know, um, he kind of tends to, like in the middle of fights, he gets comfortable. He doesn't always look for the knockout or he doesn't look to be pressing and hurting his, his fighters every single round. And as for me, I'm a great pressure fighter. I have a great jab. I have great body shots. I can have great combinations and I keep the pressure on and I try to knock people out every single round. So I know exactly what I could do. I'm sure he knows what he could do. Um, but like I said, these fights aren't made, meant to be easy. You know, um, these fights are meant to be hard. And I, like I said, I have a hunger to show the world what I'm really made of. And that's exactly what we're going to do this uh, November 25th. You know, uh, he's talked a little bit about that he's seen every style. You know what I mean? That he's he's seen it all from the amateurs to the pros. But would you agree with that? At, at least from the pro perspective, do you think he's seen anyone like David Benavides before? We've seen people put pressure on him, but not to the level and with the technique and skill that, that you bring to the ring? No, definitely. I mean, I could say the same thing. I've seen every style too. I've, I've probably seen more styles than him just because he's fighting the amateurs. He had a lot of amateur fights. Doesn't mean that he knows everything. I've, I've sparred a lot of great fighters and in my day too. So I've seen a lot of fight. I've seen a lot of styles, but as with me, what's worked for me as in, for every single fighter, even the fight, the world champions I've sparred, and then the fights I fought is that I could adapt to anything, literally anything. You know, I could box, I could brawl, I could do it all. And a lot of people, um, they really underrate my skills a lot. But once they get in, in the ring and after the fight, they're not underrating anything. They know what time it is and they know how hard I am. So, um, like I said, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great fight, man. Both these both two fighters are going to be trying to show the best, you know, the best uh, stuff they could do. And so I'm I'm just very excited. I'm very excited for this fight. I've been working extremely hard for this fight. And I definitely do know what's at stake. I know what he could do, but I definitely know what I could do too. And I'm very excited. You know, speaking of underrated, when you guys did that rating thing, getting back to that, he said, yeah, he, uh, I think he said your footwork and your defense weren't that great or something. He, he didn't seem to think very highly of it. What would be your, your response to that? Did you, you guys see my last fight, right? You I'll see Caleb excited. Plant, Caleb Plant, he landed at what, 20%? His shots, his jab was at 9%. So I don't even got to say nothing. I think that speaks on his own. He hit Canelo more than he hit me. And I'm a bigger guy. I'm a bigger target to hit. I have no defense. I have no footwork. How does Canelo get hit more than I get hit? You know what I mean? That's exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of people think un underrate me and they don't think I know what I'm doing. But it's fine. You know, I, when, once they get in the ring, they see that I there's way more that meets uh to the surface of meets the eye when it when it comes to me so we saw andre make his 168 pound debut against damon nicholson in january you said you didn't think he looked that great in that fight do you think it was you know him just being at a new weight or was there some other reason for that i think it's just him just not looking good once you go into a fight and you don't look good it's not that you're just going up to a new weight i mean you have time to prepare prepare for this didn't he say he had all the experience in the world? He's seen every style, so he should have knew how to hurt that guy. I've never gotten in the ring with somebody I didn't hurt. You know what I mean? He also, Bradgar Belenga fought the same guy. He had the guy hurt until the 12th round, 12th or 10th round. So I feel like he dominated more than Demetrius Andre. You know, a lot of these fighters that they're they're really good technicians are really good boxers. At the end of the day, this is a fight. You're trying to knock somebody out every single round. So if you don't got that power, you could have all the technique and all you want in the world. But if you don't got no power, you ain't got nothing. You think that's your biggest advantage over him, your ability to hurt him? Not that. It's just that I throw a lot. I throw punches and bunches. I attack the body. And I'm very versatile. Like I said, you guys seen everything I could do. But still, not people don't give me credit for the stuff I can do. You know, they just see me do it. But they don't think I'm going to do it in, in the next fight. You know what I mean? So there's a lot. There, I have a lot of abilities. I could do a lot. Um but like I said, I'm not overlooking Demetrius. I know he's a great fighter. You know, I know he's training extremely hard for this fight. So we're preparing for the best Demetrius and Andrade there is. You know, you, this is your second big pay-per-view headliner. What did you learn about being involved in these type of events from the uh, from the Caleb Plant fight? Just that I love it, and this is what I'm meant for. You know, um, I had a great time. It was probably one of the best time I've had in any fight. My last fight, Caleb Plant. Now that I know that Kind of, I'm, I'm shaking the nerves off and, you know, the pay-per-view nerves and the crowd and all that stuff. You know, I feel really good. Um, and I just, you know, I'm I'm at the point right now where I made the promise that I made to myself when I was a little kid that I was going to be in pay-per-view and I was going to beat all these fighters. Now I'm keeping that promise to that little kid when I made it to myself. You know, um, 
you know, at the end of the day, this is what we all want. You know, we all want to accomplish our dreams and we all want to do the best we can do. So at the end of the day, it's just me versus me. You know, I put all the work in. I didn't leave any stone unturned. And now it's time to, to reap the rewards of, of, of a hard training camp like this on November 25th. Is it almost surreal to you? I mean, when you look at where you've come and where you're at right now, or do you just not even have time to even reflect or think about that? Because you, you, the next big obstacle is right in front of you. No, I definitely do think about it. The thing about when you get these opportunities is you can't just look past them. You always got to be grateful for everything that comes your way. You know, I'm just grateful to still be here. You know, I've had a lot of rough patches in my life and my career, and I'm very happy to just still have the same work ethic, have the same ability, um, and then just still be in the spotlight. You know, um, this is my second professional, uh, uh, my second pay-per-view fight. So that makes, that lets me know I'm on the right track and, um, I'm just very happy and very grateful for everything that has been put in my way and everything that I've, I've accomplished in, in my path. I know you're, you're tired of hearing about this man, but uh, we got to ask you about, uh, you know, Canelo Alvarez. I know you've been pushing for that for quite a long time. Has it now come down to basically for you? I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've heard that I was going to fight him like a year ago and then this and that, but the thing I try not to look at that and I yet try not even bring them up no more is because this fight is going to happen no matter what. I'm not going to go nowhere, you know. My dream, this just comes back to me telling you that I need to keep the promise I made to myself when I was a little kid. My dream was to be the best fighter in the world and become the best myself, pound for pound. So I'm not going to go nowhere. And, you know, like when I tell you guys now, I'm extremely confident. I'm extremely motivated. There's nothing that I want more and to show the world that I am the best. If it happens now, if it happens next year, two years, three years, four years, like I said, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be here ready. And then when this opportunity comes my way, I'm going to definitely make the most of it. I was going to ask you how long you're, you'll stick around at 68, but it sounds like you just doesn't matter what the weight is. It might happen at 68. It might happen at 75, but it'll happen. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, people just want to see great fights. You know what I mean? And there's nobody else to oppose Canelo. I mean, what it was? What are they? What is he really doing? Why is he holding the belts up there? If they're just not gonna fight the people, there, the person that everybody wants them to see fight, you know. So I just gotta keep making my own noise, not being disrespectful, not talking shit, not doing none of that, but just being a gentleman, conducting myself like a gentleman, and being a monster in the ring. That's what I've done my whole career, and that's what I'm gonna continue to do. And I think that speaks more volume than just being disrespectful and just, you know, trying to like. I don't know, just mention his name every time because that when I when I was growing up, I never thought in my head, oh, Canelo, Canelo. That's not the, that's not the only thing that was on my mind. The only thing that was on my mind is being the best uh, champion of my generation. And that that plan is still going to continue. And like I said, I just want to show my worth and my value with my work. You're still only 26 years old. Do you take comfort in that, knowing that you'll, you have plenty of time to get the fights that you want? Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. I'm just going to be patient and let it come when it comes. You know what I mean? Um, that's the good thing about starting my career so early. You know, I have all this experience. I have 10 years professional. You know, it's kind of unheard of hearing somebody say that, and they're only 26. But I put in the work, man. I've really been working hard my whole life. I started boxing at three years old. I have 23 years boxing. So, like I said, I've just been – the big key about this boxing stuff is patience. You know, patience and consistency. You got to keep working and then keep that patience. And when this time comes, be ready to, you know, um, to to take advantage of the opportunity. You know, switching gears for a second, your brother has a big fight against Jamal Charlo on, on the uh, co-main event. How is uh, Jose looking in camp? Jose is uh, he's looking amazing. He's been training really hard. I kind of knew that they were going to give him this opportunity after his last fight. So it's, it's funny the way everything comes up. I told him his last fight, I'm like, oh, I think you're going to get that Charlo fight. And then a couple months later, passed it by. You know, he was already training because we're here, what we're doing, we just learned to make this a lifestyle, man. Even when we're done fighting, two weeks later, we're back in the gym. Mm -hmm. So they gave him the opportunity. He was hyped. Um, he's very excited. I mean, he's long overdue for a big victory, man. He's been working really hard. I um, mean, and then with the story, he has such an amazing story that he got shot in his leg and the doctor told me he was never going to fight again. Yeah, he was never even going to walk again. And now he came back up, came through the ranks, and now he's fighting, you know, the middleweight champion. And it's going to be a big fight and it's on my card. So I just feel like all the all the cards are laid out on the table in 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 our um um in our favor. You know what I mean? So we've just been working hard. 
Uh, that's that's the thing about the cause and effect. You work hard, and the effect is going to be you getting all this glory. So we've been working hard. He's been working hard. I've been sparring with him. He's been having great sparring sessions too. And man, I'm very excited. November 25th is going to be a great day for Team Benavides. What'd you make of the the back and forth during the virtual press conference? I got pretty heated. <laughs> it was entertaining. You know, um, it's always entertaining with those guys, man. You never know what they're going to do. They, you know, they just try to play the biggest gangsters, but. At the end of the day, they're going to have to fight. You know, Charlo, he's going to have to fight my brother. My brother's going to have to fight Charlo. So they're going to have to settle it like men, you know, at the end of the day. A lot of fighters say that they get more nervous about their brothers or sisters' fights than they do about their own. Is that the case with you? Yeah, definitely. You know, well, me, I freaking, I'm not going to lie, I kind of shake sometimes because I just get so nervous. I think the thing about it is that it's it's in their hands. You can't do nothing to control it. But I feel like they feel like that with my fights too. You know, because I see my brother very nervous too. It's, it's just it's just funny how that goes. Is um, well, he's been working really hard. He's really motivated, and it's time to go. November twenty fifth. Speaking of Jamal, he said uh, he's talked about defeating uh, Jose and then fighting you. What do you think about that? Um, he's not going to defeat my brother, but he can still fight me if he wants. <laughs> and that's what that's been a great fight, man. Um. I, Sometimes I don't really don't like to talk too much trash, but these guys, you know, they're great fighters. You know, I'm just a, a happy to be a part with all these fighters, even though if they talk trash or not, you know, it's all they're all really good fighters. And I would love to fight any single one of them. I'd love to fight Charlo, Canelo, all of them. You know, I just want to give good fights at the end of the day. I want to be that fighter where, you know, it doesn't matter if you're into boxing or not. You know, we're going to get the barbecue and you're going to come over and you see the David Benavides fight. And that's the type of fighter I want to be. I just want to bring excitement to the crowd. You do, and 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 it sounds like you're planning to do that again on November 25th. Talking about stopping uh, Demetrius Andre, what what makes you confident that you can uh, make that happen? Just the way I've looked in this camp, this camp is completely different from the last camp. Um, I think just experience is playing a bigger role. Me just finding out who I am and just really uh, um, finding myself in the boxing ring. Um, there's a lot of stuff I could do. There's a lot of stuff I could hurt him. You know, I've hurt all every single one of my sparring partners for every single every single sparring part uh, every single sparring for this camp. So I mean, these guys are all really good fighters too. So um, I just feel like I'm at a different level right now. Um, my focus um, and my mentality right now is on a whole different level. And you know, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna show the world what I'm made of. Last question, David. You know, Demetrius spoke about being a, a monster slayer, you know, seasoning up some turkey and uh, basing, <laughs> basically cooking you in the oven. Is that the kind of fight you expect from him? Is he is he going to is he switching things up? He's going to come at you. And, and what do you make of those comments? I mean, I don't know, man. I just I feel like, like I said, I'm going to adapt to whatever he brings to the ring. Obviously, he wants to, talk, you know, talk a little bit, say what he's going to do. But I mean, if if he's that's what he's thinking about doing, then it's going to go horrible for him. You know, um, but if he wants to go, you know, heart for heart, we can see who has a bigger heart and we can see who hits the hardest. And I guarantee you I'm going to be the one walking out with my, with my hand raised as the champion, and he's going to be the one going to the hospital after. David, we uh, I think that's a perfect ending to this interview. I want to thank you for taking the, the time out to speak to us, of course. Wishing you all the best uh, to you and your family November 25th, and uh, hope, hope to have you back on soon. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys again um, for the opportunity. Good luck, David. November 25th, boxing's brightest star shine on one knockout night. He is down! The Mexican monster, undefeated superstar David Benavidez. Benavidez, unloading. What more do you want? Defends his title against undefeated Demetrius Andre. Andre explodes. And Jermall Charlo returns to take on Jose Benavidez Jr. He gets rocked with another right hand. David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre and Jermall Charlo versus Jose Benavidez Jr. Saturday, November 25th, live on pay-per-view. That's going to do it for this week's show. We want to thank David Benavidez and Super Yell Matias for joining us. Obviously, looking forward to seeing them in, in what is going to be what looks at least on paper to be the most stacked card of 2023 again saturday november 25th from las vegas live on showtime pay-per-view you do not want to miss that we're going to break down that entire uh televised portion of the fight next week right here on the pbc podcast <laughs>